Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for a fact that makes your brain go. And it's pretty simple to put it out there. Maybe you know the answer to this. Yes. Why, why pancake syrup should not be kept near tractors? What? <laughs> First li- off, what do you mean pancake syrup? You mean syrup? Uh, syrup for pancakes. I know you can put it on Eggos and well, French you toast. Put it on waffles, French toast. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's not just one thing. Or is there pancake syrup? Is it something else? There is syrup for all those items. Okay, so it's syrup. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just, let's reword it. <laughs> Why syrup? Kenzie, that was the most impressive math you've ever done. That was deductive reasoning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank I, you. I guess I just kind of want pancakes right I'm now. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't understand. <laughs> I've been in a weird mode lately because pancakes, when I eat them now, it's like ambient. I got to <laughs> give myself, I got to give myself two hours for a nap after pancakes. Is that happening to you or not? You take like four hour naps a day, anyways, though. Not every day. Lately, I've had no naps. It's been very rough. And I know if I had a pancake now, oh my God, I'd be gone for like you seven would, hours. The, you would hit the ground like a bear hibernating. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know if anybody can eat pancakes and then just be energetic. Uh, I'm going to say something that's going to get me in so much trouble. Oh, this is going to uh, be good. I just, I don't like pancakes. What the hell? I know. <laughs> I don't really like breakfast. Imagine somebody going into work this morning. I I was listening to the radio and this crazy woman said she doesn't like pancakes. What the hell? I've actually had somebody curse me out before. And I'm like, well, isn't there just like more for you? I'm not going to steal your pancakes. I just, breakfast food does nothing for me. So you're saying you you don't like eggs and bacon either? It's no, like I eat like... Like, what are you supposed to do? So I guess I eat it sometimes because it's like, it's there. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> well, it's like you're like, everyone gets like all worked up, but I absolutely heat up lunch food. Like I would eat a burger right now. Like I, and you know what makes me mad is why the, if I put an egg on a burger, it's appropriate. If I, I could have steak and if I put an egg next to it, now it's okay. It's just, I just want it without the egg. What's the big deal? Do you remember Wendy's before they had breakfast? They called it burgers for breakfast. Amen. It was great. God, they've just, never disappointed me. Yeah, Wendy's is on <laughs> I point. What a genius thought of that promotion. Yeah. I just like that's what I want. I just would. I just want normal food. I don't know why I have to eat different food because lunch and dinner okay. are similar. Okay, first off, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. This is America. I feel everyone gets upset. And I just, I uh, hate brunch. I hate it. And well, everybody wants to go. I don't. <laughs> I just want lunch. <laughs> I don't want eggs in my burrito. I just want a burrito. So anyway, this pancake syrup. <laughs> <laughs> so you got it near your tractor, right? That's right. Uh, you should not put pancake syrup <laughs> near a tractor, and we'll tell you why. Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Well, time for a fact that makes your brain go. Why do you keep your pancake syrup away from tractors? Someone said, well, what am I going to put next to my tractor now? (laughs) (laughs) I think that's so funny. Well, not syrup, not pancake syrup. Now, this kind of went viral over the Internet because it was a certain brand of pancake syrup called uh, from the Super Tasty brand. Now, it's distributed by the United Arab Emirates. And this is the problem. The warning said, do not freeze and keep away from tractor and sun. That's what the warning label said. And sun. And the sun and the sun. Oh, I think you meant like tractor and your son. <laughs> well, listen. Like your child. <laughs> sons love pouring extra syrup on everything, oh, right? I mean, you keep it out of their, their hands, those little thiefy hands. So people went through this deep dive on it and tried to research in medical forums of why you can't have a syrup near a tractor. And they couldn't find the answer. And finally, someone, some brave person went out there and realized it was translated from Arabic. And tractor and heat are very close for some reason in the Arabic language. So really it just said, keep away from heat and the sun. Oh. And nothing to do with the tractor. But One what of these it, poor farmers have been avoiding this for years. <laughs> <laughs> All the extra effort. Yeah, but farmers just kind of go out and they put something in a tree and syrup comes out of it. I always see that in cartoons and stuff they like that. They put something in a tree. They put like a spick in the tree. Like well, you those hit it. faucets and they can just turn it and syrup comes it's out. It's not a faucet. It looks like it's a faucet. Not, in, you in, put like a hollowed out, like the old school would be like used a mallet and you almost got like a wood piece and it would come out. Have you done this before? Well, no, I haven't harvested, but like that's how you get like the syrup. But it's not necessarily sweet like that. Like then you have to make syrup out of it. That's more like, it's like the sap that you're getting. I got to say when you go to a nice breakfast spot, 
and they say they have, you know, real maple syrup. Yeah. I don't like it. Mm. I like, you know. You like the process stuff? Yes. Give me that Aunt Jemima. So they changed the name, right? They I change- think they changed the logo. Oh, the logo. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, isn't it General Milling Syrup now or something? General Milling? I swear. Uh-huh. General Milling mm. Company. We're all Googling Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Milling. It's not Aunt Jemima. It's Pearl Milling Company. Oh, man. They're erasing our history. But what is the syrup called? Is it called Pearl the- Milling yeah, it's Company? Called, it's called Pearl Milling. Well, that's Pearl ho- Milling. That's a bad name. Listen, so my son, Tristan, is so, uh, so particular about so like, his brands. So into Aunt <laughs> Like, so particular about brands, though. And so I pull this syrup out because he's like, Aunt Jemima. And he's like, oh, I want my old syrup. I'm like, it is. I don't want to hear about it. It's a new logo. Like, I like because sometimes I buy the stuff on sale. Yeah. And I have to like hide the box because I'll be like, well, oh, those waffles are different. It's like a whole thing. I actually have to throw packaging away and just store waffles in Ziploc bags so I don't mm. have to deal with it. And so he saw this and I go, it's lit. I cannot get you the old label. You have to understand it's gone. You have to kiss it goodbye. I it's Google, Pearl Milling yeah, Company. I to Google Images and put it on the bottle because, listen, I get that we should move forward and evolve, but I don't think anybody was complaining about that logo. And it was very iconic in the grocery store. You could spot it right away. That's the Even Antimima syrup. if you syrup. change it, Pearl Milling Company kind of sucks. What's it look like, the logo? It's just words. Oh. And there's the red head. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> there's no pearl inside. <laughs> Man, they don't even have Aunt Jemima syrup on eBay. I went to look to see if I could get Kenzie oh, no. some for her son, oh. but they don't They don't even have it on eBay anymore. It's really lost to history. They just cleaned it out. They erased it. Wow. Damn. Pearl Milling Company. I mean, pour one out for Aunt Jemima. At least we forget. Right, because you could always see it and well, spot it very easily. she put in the easy. work for all those years. She made it famous, That's and they right. just take it away from her. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well. It's still the same syrup, I guess. I have a question. Yes. Why can't you put syrup in the sun? Isn't syrup better when it's heated up? Uh, no. It can be heated right when you eat it, but it can't stay in the sun or heat for a long time because then it gets bacteria. Okay. that's uh, Bacteria okay. grows in it because you don't put it in the fridge. You can put syrup in the fridge, but you don't have to. I think I put mine in the fridge. You don't have to. Do you put yours in the fridge? No. Yeah. It's you don't... very difficult to pour. It gets st- oh, it... yeah. That's right. Ugh. But there's something about, for some it's reason. Like putting magic shell in the fridge is a nightmare. But you got to put that in there, right? Well, you, no, then it hardens. I know, but magic shell should be in the fridge. Absolutely not. It would be a solid. It, that's the stuff that turns to a hard coating on your ice cream I am it aware. touches cold. You don't think I haven't eaten magic shell? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> but you obviously must have forgotten the scientific concept behind it. Because if you put it in the fridge, it gets cold and it becomes a solid. It's a liquid when it's warm. Mm. What's, what's magic coming. shell? I don't know what that is. Magic shell is a, is like is like chocolate <laughs> sauce. Good Lord. Oh, Brian's <laughs> definitely had this. Yeah. It's chocolate sauce, and once you pour it on top of the ice cream, and it gets cold, it hardens. So that way it's like, like a chocolate shell instead of just sauce. So obviously if you put it in the fridge, there's no way to pour it because Wait, the-, the entire shell would form mm. in the bottle. Why do I always think we kept it in the fridge? I don't have any right now. Well, you would have none if you put it in the fridge. <laughs> See, we, have, we have the Hershey's syrup for ice cream, which is in the fridge. And then you nuke it for a minute, and then you pour it on your ice cream, and it becomes this big melty mess. It's delicious. That sounds like hot fudge. It sounds like a different thing. No, it's, a, it's Hershey syrup. It's like a syrupy coating. Uh-huh. It's just not called magic shell. It doesn't you, freeze magic up. Magic shell you cannot put in the huh. in the fridge. I don't remember. I remember I used to pour, I used to drink magic shell like, out of the bottle. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> you should call Megan and, and find out what's in your fridge right now with, with, in terms of your ice cream toppings. Because mm. I want to make sure you have the right things. We have. I know right now that we have caramel, we have the Hershey syrup thing, and I have whipped cream, and we have sprinkles that are do, not in the fridge. Do you have yeah. strawberry sauce? No, I don't oh, like that dude, crap. you got to get strawberry sauce. Really? Oh, that's where it's at. I like to buy the, I can never say this word, Marchino cherries. <laughs> Try it again? I just do it fast. Marchino's uh, cherries. Marchino, Mar, Marchino's, Marichino's. <laughs> Maracas. <laughs> but I buy that and then I eat none of the cherries. I just pour the juice out. I like the cherry juice. They call it compost, I think, the stuff that's left over. No. Compost? That's what you make when you Com- put like a bunch of trash together. Compote. Compote is also different. Compote is like when you get pancakes yeah, well, with yeah, blueberries you, on it. It's a sauce that comes after they want like all over. grinding up a chutney. Like, you can't. That's how you make a compote. Like, you blend, like, the fruits together. <laughs> that's different. Also, comp- what is going on with you today? Uh, put compost on your ice cream would be great. A compote. Compote. <laughs> but also not the same. I just like the cherry juice from the maracas. <laughs> 
The maracas. <laughs> Wait, what was that word? Maracas. 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 Yeah, well, there you go. Anyway, you don't put your, you can put your syrup wherever you want. Put it next to a tractor if you want to. It's fine. It was just a bad translation on this syrup. Speaking of pancakes, Nate Bargetsy has a great bit about oh, pancakes. The best. Well, when I mentioned that I can't eat pancakes because it's like taking Ambien. It just takes a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show on Q one oh one. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101, another reality show coming your way on TLC. And again, there's so many good ones. I don't know, Kenzie, have you, do you follow these reality show things or just Netflix shows? You because know, my favorite was, and I, did, I get to watch a lot less of it now as kids, but um, my favorite was always 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day Fiance. Fantastic. Glorious. Fantastic. Especially 90 Day the Other Way. Because I always felt like, well, they're not using them. Because everyone, the consensus is always like, obviously, these people want a green card or something like that. Sure. That's obviously, they want their money. But when the person's moving to the other country, it's like, well, I guess they're just in love. This is insane. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> Case, what's your favorite reality show? I like The Bachelor. I like The Bachelorette. I like any of the Gordon Ramsay shows. I thought the last season of Hell's Kitchen was fantastic. I like Toddlers and Tiaras whenever that's on TLC. Mm. Anything that shows the exploitation of children, I'm a little fascinated by. <laughs> it's just like, oh, man, people are really doing this to their kids. That's crazy. I yeah. can't believe that. Yeah, all for just a little TV show. Yeah, you know, mom, mom wants to pay the rent. This is how we're going to do it. I mean, the challenge is still my all-time favorite, but obviously um, I, I, I've really gone back in the Jersey Shore vacation watching old episodes I missed. It's unbelievable. And then, um, you know, just all, all the ones about fishing. There's a whole bunch of ones. I don't fish, you know, but a lot of them. No, fishing shows are good. There's the crab one now. Yeah. I can't remember it. Well, not Deadliest Catch. Not that... I, obviously, I love Deadliest Catch. Yeah. Well, I can't because I'm like, well, you're still catching stuff. Yeah. After a while. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of catching ones now. Yeah, I'm like, this? I got it. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of catching ones. <laughs> <laughs> like the Alaskan crab one. Uh, it's well, that sounds like Deadliest Catch. Yeah, it is. And then there's the Gold Rush one, too, where they try to find gold. Mm-hmm. I remember I just run a plank on these names, but I just fell into my father-in-law, put them all in my queue. Well, I think the one about gold is called Gold Rush. Yeah, but there's another word in there. Gold Rush something. Hmm. You ever watch Ice Road Truckers? Oh, yeah. Oh, what an awesome show. Kenzie, oh, Kenzie have you watched Ice Road Truckers? <laughs> well, I got to be honest, you're finding out based on this conversation. Because yeah. I'm like, why don't I like any of these? I don't like reality shows based on work. Mm. Oh, I disagree. So I'm not a real, I'm not a pawn stars. You're not another a, great one. What's in that storage unit or whatever it's called? Storage Wars, but American I Kickers. It's That's not for me. Well, I you, don't want to watch it work. You just said that in trivia when you got the Bar Rescue question, right? That you don't watch that show. Bar Rescue, is, I, I've. I like oh. Gordon Ramsay, though. I will watch Gordon Ramsay's stuff. Because that's like a competition to get a job. I don't want to watch you do your job. Mm. You know, it's not for me. That's unfortunate because you're missing some good shows. I want to be like, he is cheating. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be like, oh, we got a lot of stuff. Well, here's a new one care. coming out that I, no one asked for, but it's an actor doing it. That, As an actor, if we separate it from being an actor, I, I love him. Alec Baldwin. Is unbelievable as an actor. Ooh, who would have thought that that could be a controversial take years later? Yeah, because, I mean, be started off in Beetlejuice, one of his first movies. He was in talk radio as a radio GM that was amazing. He played just perfectly, a radio general manager. Not in Beetlejuice. No, in the next movie I said, which is uh, talk radio. Oh, okay. You, you've never seen talk radio? Uh, I don't remember. You should watch it. I think I have it. It's really good. It's an older movie, but it's yeah. really good. The Departed, of course. I can go on and on. His movies were great, but his life uh, pretty rough, uh, especially lately with the Rust movie shooting where that trial is still coming up now. It's funny, it kind of went away. It was three years ago, that shooting, where he basically murdered someone in a movie set. They indicted him on that in January this year, so he's going back for that. But instead, in the meantime, he's going to do a reality show with his family. Now, he has seven kids. 
He actually has eight kids. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But the seven kids with his second wife. And, Hilaria. Yeah, Hilaria. So here's here's the trailer for the new reality show with Alec Baldwin and his family. Hi, I'm Hilaria Baldwin. And I'm Alec Baldwin. And we have an announcement to make. We're inviting you into our home to experience the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the wild, and the crazy. <laughs> home is the place we love to be most. You say we are the bold. We are the bold. No, we are the bold ones. We all got to say it. One, two, three. We, we are, are the bold Oh, my God. <laughs> God, doesn't that sound like hell? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a David Buster's, which isn't supposed to be the case. This <laughs> is me off. Oh, I mean, she's 40 and they have seven kids. She's gotten seven kids by she, then. Well, yeah, but I mean, she's 40. So but, he, but he only married her like 10 years ago. Like they, they've had a kid like every year. They got busy. Very they did busy. work. Yeah. That's the reality show is Alec Baldwin doing work. <laughs> it's uh, it just sounds, it sounds like a lot. Our favorite place to be is home. It's like, well, first off, it's a mansion, so I'd imagine. You live in a <laughs> castle. Um, also, who the hell wants to take seven kids out of the house? So I'd imagine. I, I can imagine that's what's just going to be in their house because they can't leave the house anymore because paparazzi is still out front from the Rust movie shooting. So they're just going to film inside and make some money for the court case coming up, I guess. He's got, like. Do you think maybe he did it on purpose so he could go to prison? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Uh, I need to go somewhere better. I want to shoot myself, but I like myself too much. Yeah. So I got to shoot some other poor woman. I'm saying. Well, that's what I always think about with Alec Baldwin and. I, I, I don't mean to make light of this because obviously sobriety is a journey. And if you're sober, congratulations. But Alec Baldwin had a headline earlier this year where he said he's 39 years sober wow. as of 2024, which I just can't believe given that it's Alec Baldwin. And all I know of him is him being a maniac. I feel like this show would be better if he was drinking the entire time. Well, I guess we'll see if he's sneaking something in the bathroom when he gets away from the seven kids in the yeah, kitchen that'd screaming. Be so good. Nice. That'd be so awesome if the cameras just <laughs> caught him drinking in the corner. Traditionally, you know, it's good to not drink, and not, but don't you think at a certain? It's like sometimes it's like maybe we should have one. I think he needs one from yeah. some of the stuff he's been through lately. Not, again, that's just me because I, I would have a drink at this point. <laughs> you would have a drink if you accidentally shot somebody on the side of Rust. I think that's a fact. <laughs> and then you cut a hole. Imagine that. Imagine you accidentally shoot somebody, and the guilt you would feel, and you're dealing with the family, and you're wondering if you're going to go to prison. All that. And then you come home and there's seven kids and they're, <laughs> and they're arguing about like, it's my Barbie. I mean, it's a, it's a miracle more people weren't murdered. Oh. <laughs> a miracle. Yeah. It's wild. I can't, like, imagine like, I just need to go home. I just need to clear my head. And you walk in and you hear what sounds like a Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, I didn't realize his kids were this young. Yeah, they're, well, again, he only married, she's the second wife, so... Uh, Ireland Baldwin was his only ch child with his wife, uh, was Kim Basinger. And that was Dirty Little Pig voice. Yeah, Got that's it. Uh, now, this this is how angry he was with one kid. <laughs> Just let you, you know, here's that. I am going to get on a plane, or I'm going to come out there for the day, and I'm going to straighten your ass out when I see you. Do you understand me? I'm going to really make sure you get it. Then I'm going to get on a plane. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to come home. <laughs> so you better be ready Friday, the 20th, to meet with me. So I'm going to let you know just how I feel about what a rude little pig you really are. You are a rude, thoughtless little pig, okay? To be played this man. <laughs> Nicely, he was like, "By the way, it's the 20th. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, the best part. Because obviously, it's a well, you don't want to double schedule things. I, I feel like he was still being kind. Like, listen, I'm gonna be in town, honey, on the 20th, and you're a rude little <laughs> pig. I will see you Friday. It's been a while before I go home. I was like, it's almost a little nice. To, to continue on that, he goes. Then I'm going to get on a plane, and I'm going to leave. Like, like yeah. he over gave too many details. We can play it one more time. It is anger in this voicemail. And he was, by the way, uh, Ireland Baldwin was 12 years old when this voicemail came. That's insane. That is absolutely yeah. insane. I have to be honest, because I was pretty young when this voicemail dropped, okay? It was 2007. Yeah, I was pretty young. Um, what did she do? Do we have the details I want to know, because there are instances where your 12-year-old probably could be a rude little pig, and I am I am so intrigued. Oh, you mean not what did she do after she got the voicemail? No, what did what, she do to why, get the voicemail? Why was he mad? Wow, I've never thought about that. I am fascinated, because he's not even in the same state as her, and he's upset. 
Which so says a lot. He was going through the divorce with Kim Basinger at the time. Okay. And I think I'm not 100 percent sure, and it was but his daughter's fault, obviously. Well, clearly. <laughs> Well, that's the root of divorce is well, children. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I want to stay here with my hot wife, but you're a rude little pig for getting in the middle of it. Um, I believe it had something to do with the divorce situation going on. And she, I, I'm trying to remember exactly. I just remember they were getting divorced and maybe she uh, had the child do something that he didn't approve of or something. I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the exact information on that because he says you better, you better be ready on Friday the 20th to meet with me in this voicemail. That's it's unbelievable because I just, because thoughtless self, I, I, as a parent, I have to go, so what did she do that was so thoughtless? Because at 12 years old, you just don't have a lot of power, right? Yeah. So how could you be thoughtless? Like when, when my son Tristan's thoughtless, I'm like, oh, your cup's out. But I'm not like, you rude, disgusting pig. Your plate is here. So I'm like, what could she do at 12 I guess that it's, is that thoughtless? It says that he accused his wife, then to be ex-wife, uh, refused to discuss parenting, attempted to block his visitation rights, would provide... Uh, oh, it sounds like you really deserved the visitation rights. <laughs> <laughs> and it was they used this thing like parent, parental alienation syndrome, that she was kind of making her angry at her dad. And then the rumor was that uh, Kim Basinger leaked this voicemail out during the case to make him look like a madman, which it pretty a much did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I Slide the really banner. Bleaked it or just played it for the judge so she could have custody. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I think that I should be the one. Um, I have a voicemail that kind of proves it. Again, it was a while ago, but can you imagine if he was winning the case and then she just walks in with a recorder with this little smirk on her face and then says, Judge, before you make your decision, listen to this. I am going to get on a plane <laughs> and I'm going to come out there for the day and I'm going to straighten your ass. By the way, I look. I breaking this down even more. I didn't realize in the beginning. He goes, "I'm gonna get on a plane. I'm gonna come out for the day." <laughs> you know, <laughs> I am gonna get on a plane, and I'm gonna come out there for the day. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, get a little, maybe get a little lunch. And, uh, <laughs> I think it's important that she knows that day is for her dad. <laughs> I think that's important. <laughs> and I'm gonna straighten your ass out when I see you. Do you understand me? I'm going to really make sure you get it. Then we got a plane. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to come home. <laughs> also, not great. Not great to admit when you try to get custody that you consider somewhere else to completely be home that your daughter is not. It never goes well. <sighs> I I love the way he says strain your ass out because he puts a few to extra A's on ass. He's like, I'm going to strain your ass out. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, let me see this. <laughs> I'm going to really make sure you get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I, I, missed the, I missed that part. Okay, here we go. This for the day, and I'm going to straighten your ass out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny, though, Brian, uh, is if what you said is true, yeah. and he's just blaming his ex-wife for alienating the daughter, one, wouldn't that be your ex-wife's fault? Two, how do you think this is going to help? Yeah. <laughs> how dare you think I'm not a good parent? It's like I'm the Scare kill Straight you. program. This is why they send kids to prison for an afternoon. He's trying to scare <laughs> Ireland straight. I don't know. Do you think that's what he's doing on the Rust set, too? He's like, look what I'm capable. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. I have some breaking news here. We just talked about the Alec Baldwin family reality show on TLC. It's going to be called The Baldwins. One point, it's it's not going to come out till next year, 2025. Seems a little bit, I guess they got to film it, but I mean, I still. I mean, they're trying to get through the court thing. The, the court case starts in July, so just about a month away, July 9th, on the manslaughter charge from the Rust shooting, the tragic shooting. But I did find out why Alec Baldwin was so pissed off in that oh. voicemail. Thank you. From it's been bothering me so much for now, so many years. Now, once again, before I give you that, it's one more time if you just joined us, that 2007 Alec Baldwin voicemail to his daughter Ireland when she was 12 years old. He was pissed off about something. When I, After this, 25 seconds will tell you what he was pissed off about. I am going to get on a plane, <laughs> and I'm going to come out there for the day, and I'm going to straighten your ass out when I see you. Do you understand me? Mm-hmm. I'm going to really make sure you get it. Then we got a plane. I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna come home. So you better be ready Friday, the 20th, to meet with me. So I'm gonna let you know just how I feel about what a rude little pig you really are. You are a rude, thoughtless little pig, okay? To replay this, man. I, I wonder if she replayed it. 
<laughs> to replay this message at one. She was like, surely I didn't hear that right the first <laughs> well, time. Well, she's trying to get the date. She's yeah. like, ah, <laughs> what did he say? It was the 19th? Well, oh, he said the 20th. Like, yeah. wait, was, was that Friday? My, was, was that my dad? <laughs> yeah. uh, let me replay that to make sure. There's yeah, she's no like, way. who is this? <laughs> <laughs> New phone, who this? <laughs> so I found, you ready to find out why he was so pissed you off? You have no idea how ready I am. I, I'm so happy you have the answer because it's been bothering me. So I told you they were going through a divorce. His mm. first wife, Kim Basinger, uh, who, by the way, was Eminem's mom in 8 Mile, if you don't know who she is. Oh, I've seen 8 Mile. I know that. Yeah. And that's, not in real life. She's, no. not, Eminem, she's not Eminem's mom. I just want you guys to know that. <laughs> I just want to clarify. Be, ra- be rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> But she was, you know, a super beautiful A-list actress. And even she was beautiful in 8 Mile, too. But she's probably... Oh, beautiful on the inside. Yeah. Oh, no. She was beautiful. Okay, you know I mean? sure. She's kind of rough around the edges yeah. of that movie. Intentionally. It was well, like, yeah. she's pretty, but yeah. I, I, had a, oh, I had a thing for her when I was younger. It's hard to look at her when Brittany Murphy's in that movie. Oh, rest in peace. Or one out Brittany Murphy. Oh, she... All right, if I could just reel the, you want the answer? in, because I would love to know. <laughs> if you guys could just compare who you'd rather sleep with in a movie... That's super old later. Because no, I, I would love to know the answer to this. I kind of asked first. Now, that's a good morning show topic we just came up with there, Kenzie. No, I'm okay. Um, maybe when I'm sick next day. Okay. You and him and Brittany Murphy sleep together, right? In, yes. the, in the auto shop. It's, it's steamy. Okay. <sighs> so here we go. They were in the middle of divorce. After his daughter, Ireland, failed to answer her father's scheduled morning phone call from New York on April 11th, he went berserk and called her with that voicemail. She just didn't pick up the phone when he called. She could be like in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was part I'm of the. Let it breathe for a few minutes. This was part of the contention of the divorce, and and he was claiming that Kim Basinger didn't give him access to his child, and he was angry, and so he had to schedule phone calls because he was mm. in New York and she was out in L.A. So he scheduled that phone call, and then she just didn't pick up the phone. <laughs> So he just loved her so much. He did. It, he did. Oh, it's actually sweet now if you think about it. He was yeah. just so upset he couldn't talk to her. But he did this. I am going to get on a plane. <laughs> so that, that set him out. Oh, my God. He's going to fly all the way there. <laughs> he misses her so much. I'm going to come out there for the day. <laughs> That's nice. Day. Clearly, he's busy. Uh, That's get, nice. Might get some sushi, you know. I'm going to straighten your ass out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> straighten your ass out. He's just hurt. <laughs> hurt people hurt people. You know what's funny is there's another part of this voicemail that I don't think I have access to right now where he goes, I don't give a damn if you're 12 years old or 11 years old. <laughs> he doesn't know how old uh, his daughter no. is. Well, you know, he's just, no, he's just listing like, it doesn't matter if you're uh, 8, uh, 10, uh, 11. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I still love you. Oh, Kenzie, I, I tell you what, it is nice that you can see the good in people. Uh, it's just, come on, guys. Al- Alec Baldwin, for 15 years, has been vilified over this voicemail. Turns out he was just a, a caring parent. My God, he missed her. Everybody's quick to crucify nowadays. Oh, boy. Haven't you ever just been brought to tears because you miss somebody so much? <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, haven't you ever just wanted to straighten somebody's ass out when I yell about you, it? Do you understand me? I'm going to really make sure you get it. <laughs> also, very similar voicemail I leave to my husband when he doesn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. It's time for Head to Headlines, where you decide the content of the show just by texting. It's that easy. It's very interactive. Very on-demand radio show. So, 312-591-8300. We've given you two headlines, headline one or headline two. We'll go over them again real quick before we tell you who won, and you can still text while I'm reading these. Mm -hmm. So headline number one was, man stole liquor truck in hopes of selling off the booze to pay off drug debt. Now, we're not always encouraging you to go to theft to pay off debt, but at least he's trying. He's trying. Yeah. Good guy, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Well, let's let's not get carried away. What? Uh, What did I say? He might not be a good guy. Somebody owned that liquor he's trying to sell. Oh, what? The big, big companies? No. (laughs) Amen, sister. Instead of big pharma, it's big booze. Big booze. (laughs) Big booze. Probably even bigger, so what are you? (laughs) So that's headline number one. Headline number two was, woman bitten by Catholic priest during communion, quote, he wouldn't give me the cookie. (laughs) I'll tell you what. <laughs> All I know is I'm going to the wrong church. They have cookies at some church. Well, I think she's is referring to the wafer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the body of Christ, yeah. some would say. 
<laughs> oh. She's just calling it a cookie. Who calls it a cookie? Very misleading. We should uh, sue her. Oh, my gosh. See, that I remember, sucks. When, before I continue, in the Orthodox Church where I was brought up in, you get this big piece of bread. Ooh, like a it's, whole it, piece? It's like a, a whole loaf? It's a, it's a lot. I mean, it's, like it's a sandwich. It's, it's, they're hitting on Jimmy <laughs> Jones. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I hope no one takes Let's offense really to this. Let's really get into this body. Yeah. You know? <laughs> No one's to take offense to this. We're just joking. No, you know? but I don't understand. What do you mean you got a big piece of bread? It wasn't a wafer. It was like literally a doughy piece of delicious bread. Like a roll? Would you go to a bakery? Like this if you cut up a French bread. Texas Roadhouse? Uh, like, let's say. Oh, you, my gosh. Were they hating on Texas Roadhouse rolls? It was not Texas toast. I didn't get that. <laughs> or the cinnamon. What is it? Oh cinnamon my, butter? The cinnamon butter? Now, yeah. if, if Christ, you know, was passing out his body, that's what I imagine. Cinnamon butter? He's one, <laughs> I mean, come on. He's one of the best. And well, why wouldn't he have the best? Tasting body. I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. No, I'll let you go. I'm you just got, saying. You're going on a path. You can go roll with it. We go. should let you explore this one, Kenzie. Yeah. yeah I just, why? I, I think the wafer is a bad misrepresentation because I think, he, you know, he's got, he turns water into wine. Yep. He's doing it big. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the wafer doesn't represent that. I feel. This bread that I ate was dead. I know. That's it what was, I'm talking about. Uh, Let's exchange some addresses. Yeah. You're the Orthodox Church. I, maybe some of my uh, Greek and other friends out there in the Orthodox world can explain. Maybe they had that too. But Ooh. let's add it all up, and here we go on uh, Head to Headlines. The winner of Head to Headlines, and we'll never talk about the other story again, is woman bitten by Catholic priest I during communion. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wouldn't give me the cookie. Now, we'll never talk about that other story again, but I think it, it, that headline some people said, well, it tells me what happened. The man stole a liquor truck in hopes of selling off booze to pay off drug debt. Now, there's some wonderful details in that story we'll never get to. But uh, we're going with this one. People want to hear about the cookie. That's right. They do it all for the cookie. uh I wanted a cookie also, so I get it. Well, let's go to Miami. That's where the story takes place. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Say no more. Uh, Got it. I'm uh, caught up. (laughs) uh, A Central Florida Catholic priest is charged with battery after a woman says he bit her during communion. Mm-hmm. She told police in St. Cloud that the scuffle began after he initially refused to give her the sacrament. Now, before I continue, I want to say there's two sides to the story. You're going to hear the priest's side after we get to her side. She said, quote, he wouldn't give me the cookie. I don't know if it was the way I was dressed or if it what, or if it is what I like or if it is what I like. Hmm. Interesting. What? I know. I, so I grew up in the Catholic Church. And I had a priest growing up who was very, very strict, and he would not give people communion if they were dressed a certain way. There was a, a very specific, specific dress code in that church. Oh. If you were wearing, like, a backwards baseball hat, you are not getting the body of Christ. If you are wearing shoes that are distracting, you are not getting the body of Christ. A lot of rules going on, and he, you know, obviously was the guy that made the rules. It's interesting, because if you read the Bible, um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Jesus was a little more open to the crew that showed up. I'm not sure Jesus, if he was giving out the sacrament, would have gave it to Fred Durst with his hat backwards. No, though. Jesus loved Fred he, Durst. He shouldn't wear a hat in church. He should, he should not do that. I mean, I get it. You know, people dress... Church has gone downhill as far as dress. We've been to a church lately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's have the old man yelling show. at clouds. <laughs> no, I mean, he, I saw pictures of my parents at their wedding. Everybody was wearing, like, suits and fedoras just wedding? for a normal. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was not a wedding. It was a regular day at church. I'm sorry. I, I, you I met just the, said a picture I know. of your parents I did at not, their wedding. I was going through the wedding pictures, and I saw just a regular day at church. Are you and sure it wasn't a wedding? It was not the wedding. <laughs> this was a different Sunday. Damn it. It was not a wedding. And people used to dress up with fedoras and suits and all that. And listen, I don't, I, I wear nice clothes when I go to church, but I don't, I don't wear a suit or a fedora. I'd love to get my, my fedora phase is over. I can't go back. Thank goodness. <laughs> when did that stop? Because I was just watching a baseball game from 1956. Long story. I don't want to get into it. Okay. Please. Everybody there was wearing a suit and tie. Yeah. When did that stop being the thing that everybody did? Brian, you were there. Let us know. What was the date? What, in 56? Yeah. Let me go back there for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what happened was... Were you so, still listening to baseball on the radio? Yeah, I was on the radio with Marconi. <laughs> <laughs> it was you and Vince Scully calling That's the right. game. <laughs> 
you know, right after I announced that Pearl Harbor was attacked on That's the radio, right. that famous radio broadcast. <laughs> you went into Lovely the Band after that, yeah. you know, I, the up-and-coming band at the time. I don't know what the over-under, I want to say it was in, like, the late 90s when things fell apart. I don't know, maybe grunge did it. I think it's grunge's fault. I don't think late 90s. People were not wearing suits to People baseball were st- games. No. W- early oh, oh, 90s. baseball games. Well, baseball games and church, same difference. When you go to... Not, well... <laughs> <laughs> You know, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I'm saying that I still remember people dressing nice to church in the 90s. Well, I'm, so do I. Yeah, but I, all of a sudden now people are wearing basketball shorts in church. I don't. Okay. I see it. I just think that, I think that you, usually those are young people or whatever. And I just, it's probably good that they're there. I mean, I just. It, it's better to go to church than not. But I also saw like a 58 year old guy wearing basketball shorts. So this is why, this is something, um, which is such a bummer. My brother and I were, I mean, with our parents, we went to church. And he was wearing a hat because he has a really bad psoriasis problem that he was really sensitive about. Mm. And this old woman, he went to, like, shake her hand, you know, and they're like, okay, everyone greet each other when you get there, which is always my least favorite part. And I know that that sounds bad, but I don't want to touch a bunch of people's hands and get sick, okay? So I'm like, can we just wave at people? I don't know. Whatever. God, for, God forbid the community in church here. Well, I'm, sorry, I'm not Jesus, and I can't cure that, okay? And I don't want to touch it. So uh, that's not my forte. All right. So I always hate that part. But my poor brother goes to shake a woman's hand, and she's like, take your take your hat off, and like glares at him, won't shake his hand, and turns around. And it made him not like church. And it's like, you don't know what people are going through. Like, he was actually had a huge psoriasis issue. He was trying to cover it up because he was embarrassed. Mm. So, so I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like being judgy of what people are wearing and why they're doing it. Because mm. I watched how upset my brother got from it. So yeah. I'm going to stay away from you being judgy about people's outfits at I'm church. I'm just saying dress a little bit. you just enjoy the loaf of bread they're handing out <laughs> hey, and mind your business? I'm just saying you can just change your clothes a little bit to go to church. Everybody wants to go in sweatpants everywhere today. And I like sweatpants. Trust me. I'm no fashion icon, but if you're going to church, you I... You are no fashion icon. But, uh, is the you know, and I'm, and I'm you sorry ever... your brother had that problem. I'd wear the hat. I would wear a hat, too, if I had that issue. But maybe the woman in Miami was wearing sweatpants, and that's why she didn't get communion. Or it's Miami, so it was probably like... <laughs> they probably were hoping for more clothing, is what I imagine. Not that, not that it was just too big. She baggy. went in there in a halter top and a thong. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it's so, so hot. Let's get back to the story. So she said, you know, he wouldn't give me the cookie. I don't know if it was the way I was dressed or whatever. A witness said. <gasps> so he tried to forcefully shove it in her mouth. She backed up. She said, no, no, don't do that. And she tried to get it. And that's when he went crazy. Like she tried to still get the cookie. It was a very scuffle so situation. So he wanted to put it in her mouth. Okay, let me put. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> do tell. Okay. <laughs> he was hoping to place the cookie in her mouth. Which is what they do. No hands. They do that. Right, and she wasn't about that. I, apparently, that's what that's what the witness said. Um, but still, it was a little a scuffle, if you will. And the priest now tells a different story. Let's get to the priest story. All oh, right, what happened? He said the woman had come in earlier and did not seem to understand how to receive communion. So he denied her the Eucharist. She didn't know the process of going up there, putting your hands, you know, get on, you know, kneeling down and just didn't understand the process. So he said, well, you got to learn that before you can come in here and get it. To Case's point, some priests can be really strict. Yeah, absolutely. It's their church. There's two, there's two ways to do it. You can go up with your hands sort of crossed and they can place it in your hands and you can go up that way. Yep. Or which I always thought was weird. I never did this. You could basically go up and stick your tongue at the priest and say, drop this puppy in here, <laughs> which I just all, I never had the confidence to do that. So you go up there and you say, drop this puppy in there <laughs> to the body of Christ, I guess. Uh, hmm. We're all going to hell. Uh, I'll see you there. Um, so then he says the conflict occurred when she returned the mess later on and she reached for the entire batch of wafers. She wanted a whole thing of them. She put it, that's so, what he says. Okay, so what I'm gathering is she was drunk and just left a club and wanted a snack. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, how this reads. Thought it was a buffet or something. Yeah, seriously. And so that's what he says happened. He said, I'm not judging you. I'm asking you, did you confess after mass? Did you not confess? I cannot give you communion. He says, I bit her. I'm not denying that. <laughs> well, he's honest, and that's important. You can't lie. And he says he was defending himself and the sacrament. Now, I'm not sure how his mouth came Why into didn't biting. Why did he just step backwards? Yeah. <laughs> I just feel... He said he, re- he was reacting to protect the sacrament is what he said. That's he his last that, statement. Uh, we know what his reaction is, fight or flight, and he, uh, mm. he leans into it, doesn't he? I'll tell you what, if someone's going to bite you, you don't fight that person. Because if they're willing to bite you, 
That's a lot. That's a big commitment that they're they're crazy. Yeah, I'm, not, that, saying the, I'm yeah. not saying the priest is crazy. I'm you've just saying. You've never but, bit anybody. I've never bit anybody in a fight. Kinsey, you've bit someone. That's the better question. <laughs> you don't bite. I'm, I'm going to sit back here and you tell me your biting story. No, I, I feel like I bite just all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you biting? Interesting, because I don't. I yeah. bite my husband a lot. He gets mad, but I bite him. In a fight? No, like when I see him. Oh, so it's a cute <laughs> little butt nibble. I like to, but then I do it too hard and he gets mad at me. <laughs> I'm just like, how are you? <laughs> I'm Dracula over here. Good Lord. <laughs> I just like to, I just, <laughs> Are you training to be a priest? I just, um, you don't, you don't nibble on, like, you don't, like, bite people when you see them sometimes? I, 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 I did bite Case two weeks ago. <laughs> you did? Yeah. You wouldn't get out of the car, so I said, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q 101.